welcome you back to Stillwater, Oklahoma. Again, you're ready for Oklahoma State and Missouri State coming up in just a matter of moments as the Cowboys have won the toss and they elect to defer to the second half. So they will kick it away here to get things started on a day in which the rain is starting to come down in buckets. So this is going to be something like announcing a game through the front windshield of a car going down the highway in a rainstorm about 60 miles an hour because we can't see much of anything Wrong from man. up here at our vantage point. Dan Bailey will kick it off and kicks it deep. Coming down at the goal line, King Jack Washington from the one. Gets out to the 15-yard line. That's the end of the row. The ball got loose, but it'll stay with Missouri State. So first down and 10 as a 14-yard return. But Thomas coming up with the tackle to get this thing started. Johnny Thomas, the defensive back, backup defensive back down on special teams, making the play. So let's take a look for Missouri State and the way they'll start it off because it is Cody Kirby. He's a sophomore from Rogers, Arkansas, getting the start from the Missouri Valley Football Conference Freshman of the Year a year ago. Again, in a driving rain here in Stillwater. Handed off right up the middle. And a gain of four, the ball got loose, and Oklahoma State has it. King Jack Washington put it on the turf. And who came away with it? I think it's Junior Taya. Junior Taya, but it was also Ori Lemon. The middle linebacker, number 41, watch him come across. Great job. Now he gets in on that, and then I think he goes Quentin to Moore. No, Quentin Moore. He got a helmet right on the football. Excuse me. I thought that was Ori Lemon coming across, but it was Moore sitting right in the hole. The safety was able to make sure the helmet right on that football, the free safety. And here, Oklahoma State got a great field position to start the game. So Zach Robinson with his club taking over at the 18-yard line to get this game started. A turnover on the first play. Kendall Hunter, the single setback, trying that left side. Hunter down to the 15-yard line. That's the end of the road there. Cedric Alvis coming up, helping to make that stop. Chris Farrar, the other quarterback as well, on in on the tackle. As Kendall Hunter, the sophomore from Tyler, went for 210 yards a week ago. Let's take a look at our starting lineups for the Oklahoma State Cowboys, the big guys up front, and they are big and athletic. And Des Bryant, the guy to keep an eye on, as well as Brandon Pettigrew, that tight end, they will go to him as much as anybody will use their tight end anywhere. Des Bryant can't hold on to it out in the flat as they tried the screen, and that's what they will do. They'll get the ball to Des Bryant in space, let the big guy go to work. He's got great size and maybe even better speed. There you take a look at Mike Gundy, a former four-year starter here at Oklahoma State, the all-time leading passer here for the Cowboys. Yeah, he's trying to get Des Bryant. You see the off coverage by the corner of Cedric Alvin there. But he's getting on the bubble screen. Des Bryant not able to go on the football. Robinson to Hunter. Huge hole up the middle, down to the five, inside the five-yard line, and down to the two. And this is one of the things that Coach Allen talked about. He thought if they could stop the running game, they could have a chance to put the ball in Zach Robinson's hand. Just take a look. Good job up front. Good off the line that time. That'll go right back up the middle here. And they'll stop him at the one-yard line. Tried to sneak it in to Zach Robinson after that 13-yard gain by Kendall Hunter. So take a look at the defense. Washington, Bramer, Moore, and Dickahue up front. Dawson blocking Randolph, the linebackers. Alvis and Farrar are the corners. And Skyler Smith and Roger Wright, the free safety and the strong safety. They try it again. Same play. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Time Zach Robinson did a good job getting his pads down and able to get in there. Take a look at the surge. Uh, good job of wedge blocking. Also 62 Brandy Bond. 667, 290 pounds. Look at the movement at the point of attack. And that time Zach Robinson take that step back and see the field better, able to get into the end zone. Now they'll go for two on the swinging gate, and it's good. So a two-point conversion as Bo Johnson took it in. The defense never adjusted. They snapped it right back to Johnson, and the two-point conversion is good, and it's an 8-0 Oklahoma State lead. Didn't take long. The Cowboys are on top.
Well, Mike Gundy's defense dodging a bullet there on that fourth down and a foot. The illegal procedure call and then the missed 51 yard field goal. And turnovers. Communication from the sideline been a problem for the Bears last week and extends to this week. Roll in the pocket. Robinson throwing downfield. Has his man. It's caught. Cutting it back to the 20. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Bo Bowling caught it, knew what to do with it once he got it. A 65-yard touchdown reception. Okay, just take a look at Bo Bowling again. Zach Robinson rolling out of the pocket, design boot, and here's Bo Bowling again against the zone defense, and he just runs to daylight. Excellent speed, and one of the question marks on this team was who else besides Des Bryant at the wide receiver position would stand up? Well, Bo Bowling does it big time today in the first quarter with a catch and a touchdown. First catch of the season, it goes for 65 yards and a touch. Now the point after. Bailey. And he is good. We were talking about off camera over 3,000 yards passing, over 3,000 yards rushing the football. Very balanced, good offense line up front, only 11 sacks last year. They can get it done running or passing the ball. 55 yard punt, couldn't come at a better time. Zach Robinson. And Robinson sticking his nose in there and getting it out to the 35 yard line. That is something, you know, talking this week with the coaching staff, and Mike Gundy said, you know, what I would probably like to see him do more of is get out of bounds a little bit. That's not his style, and that's not the way he's going to do it. And he's got some Jim Brown in his blood, the way he runs the football. But remember, again, this quarterback, 4 6 speed. This is just not a mobile quarterback. This is a, a quarterback with running back speed. And mine's a guy, Gans, up in Nebraska. Makes it so difficult for defense. They'll hand it this time. Try to get wide, can't do it. Cut down there as Chris Farrar comes up and hits Kendall Hunter and took him off his pegs, and it's a short game. And also on this play, too, number 44 for the Bears, Roger Wright, the safety. He does a great job of extending that to the outside. Of course, that running back east and west, now you got inside support that time. Chris Farrar is ever able to make the tackle. So now a second down. Again, first down and more. To the 45-yard line. Inside the 45 goes Kendall Hunter. And Farrar finally there to make the stop, but not before a gain of 19 yards. Kendall Hunter, great job of reading the block, but how about the block by 54? Andrew Lewis able to seal on the inside. Then the downfield block by Desmond Bryant. We'll be talking about that all day today. Three-step drop. And he threw it behind Des Bryant. So Zach Robinson missing on the pass there. You know, Zach Robinson's first collegiate appearance came in 2006 right here against this Missouri State team, a Missouri State team that they opened that season with. Oklahoma State 2-0 going for their fourth 3-0 start in the last five years, coming off a 39-13 win over Washington State. Last week, knocking off Houston 56-37. In that game last week against Houston, they did not punt or did not turn the ball over in the second half. They were absolutely dominant. Hunter was on the Stairmaster after the game. Hunter has 10, has 15 yards down near the 25-yard line. A huge hole up front. Oklahoma State's doing what they want to do, and they're doing it when they want to do it. Yeah, just running behind Okun and also Lewis, the left guard and left tackle. They pull Brady Bond around, and again, it's all set up with the trips formation, spread the defense out. Skyler Smith saved a touchdown, but not before a game of 15 yards. And they're getting more here down near the 10, inside the 15. That's his sixth carry of the game so far for that young man, and he is well over 60 yards already. Yeah, I love the way the running back, Kendall Hunter, keeps his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage so he can see the field, then he can make his cut and get going north and south. So important in terms of fundamentals. You're seeing the big play, a big bright future for number 24. Six carries, 69 yards already. Here's Tolson up the middle, and Keith Tostin. It's it down near inside the five yard line. Let's bring up a second down. And about five to go for the first down. So you got to get to the four for the first down. Tostin, his first carry of the game. And Mike Gundy talked about it. He wants to be able to run the football. He wants to be able to establish a line of scrimmage. He wants to set the tempo. No better way to do it than get the big guys up front. Here. And 
of the toast in here, and he tried the right side. And that time, there were a lot of white shirts there, and there was nothing doing. Big guys up front, Chris Bramer, the man leading the way right there. Levi Moore as well. He's kind of a long strider, Toastin, number five. Interesting guy. Had some, inter had some fumbling problems last year, overcame some injuries, and he's back to running the football strong this year. Well, there's Kendall Hunter back in the game. You see the numbers on him. Back to the eye formation now, fullback. Some power football. And this basically these offenses will go about their business in exactly the same manner. As you see, they'll look over, get the signal. Hunter up the middle. The signal is touchdown. Second touchdown of the game. An eight-yard run. And right now it is 22 to nothing. Deming and Washington up front again. Slip block. Get to the second level on the linebacker. And again, Kendall Hunter. You know what? Not making any bones about it makes it fake. Get going north and south. Get behind your blockers. Let them develop. And then you see the hole. Hit it in for the touchdown. So for the 22-0 lead, once again, Dan Bailey comes in to kick it through. And he's good. What a performance so far by Mike Gundy's team. 98 yards rushing, 66 yards passing, already 154 yards of total offense. And we are just barely through halfway of the first quarter. Well, welcome you back. Mr. Pete's been a busy man. Oklahoma State has been as well. They do these push-ups after every Oklahoma State touchdown. Some guys not going to need to go to the gym this week. I need to go to the gym after I had breakfast this morning. I heard the hotel is like, hey, as much as you want, buffet line. I saw you coming to close the doors. He's getting off the elevator. Shut the it down. Freight elevator. Kevin Eschenfelder alongside Richard Baldinger. We welcome you to Stillwater, Oklahoma. Going up top for Des Bryant. Bryant's going to get called for offensive pass interference, but the ball is caught down at the one-yard line, or down at the 20-yard line. He and Chris Farrar got tangled up and pushed off on Farrar. Yeah, and all they do in that jump ball is he just tries to throw to the back shoulder, Zach Robinson. But again, I think they're going to get Farrar on the hole. Defense, number two. Got it. 15 yards from the previous spot, first down. And again, when you just watch Des Bryant, his ability, his athleticism to be able to stop and turn, he reads exactly what the defense back's doing. Him and Zach Robinson are on the perfect page. They're on the same wavelength. He knows where to go with the football. And then the physical ability of the beast from Stillwater to be able just to dominate on the outside. Yeah, that ball wasn't caught. That ball hit the ground. So a 15-yard penalty, and it brings it out to the 40-yard line. I thought they were going to get Des Bryant for that push-off. Des Bryant, the National Offensive Player of the Week after what he did against the University of Houston last week. Had a quiet day so far today. They haven't needed him. They've had this guy, Kendall Hunter. To the five, to the four-yard line. A 36-yard carry from Kendall Hunter. He's over 100 yards rushing again today. It all starts up front when the big ugly's got to get it done. But look at the offense line. Look at the sustained block on the front side of the game. Wide receivers downfield. And Kendall Hunter, Kendall Hunter, excuse me, with an explosiveness. And again, Pettigrew, number 87, the tight end. Good block on the outside. Able to get Kendall Hunter to the edge. And it's all big time. Boy, he, he made a huge move on Cedric Alvis. You see the numbers on him. This time hit in the backfield and made lose a yard here back to the five yard line. A little run blitz that time by the Missouri State. And again, when you're watching this Oklahoma State offensive line, they don't panic. They sustain blocks. They keep their feet moving all the time. And when you're running that zone blocking scheme, that's all you want. Get the defense moving to the side, sustain blocks, the hole will open up for your running back. Now they keep it on the ground here, and no problems getting into the end zone for the third time today. Touchdown, Kendall Hunter. Again, just the back side this time on the play. Steve Denning, Brady Bond on the back side. Able to go ahead and again, just look at the block on the back side by number 65, Steve Denning. Give him a flat back on the play. That opened up a nice running lane for Kendall Hunter. I said it was his third. It's his second touchdown of the day with Kendall Hunter having a huge day. Again, after going for 200 yards plus last week, 210. 
He stays in the game today. He's going to be close to that, if not surpassing it. So the point after is good. And just like that, it is 29 to 3. We got a lot of football left to be played. We're back with more from Stillwater in a moment on Fox College Sports. Well, a five-yard penalty in essence cost Missouri State about 40. It would have been the ball deadened on a 55-yard net punt from five. Ball now all the way back out to the 46-yard. Yeah, just watching Des Bryant. And the one thing about this man, big, physically strong, but very elusive. He can make people miss. His change of direction, excellent. Keeps his shoulder pads over his knees. So strong. And I'll tell you what, he's electric every time he touches the ball. Robinson handed it off right up the middle. And Tostin, junior from Angleton, Texas, coming into this game, needing 82 yards to get to 1,000 for his career. Uh, they talk about a running game. This Oklahoma State offense, they lead the Big 12 in rushing. They average over 100, about, about 160 yards per game on the ground. Yeah, I'll tell you what, when you rotate Bo Johnson, Keith Tostin, and Kendall Hunter, Kendall Hunter, you get three different looks at the running back position. Makes it very difficult for a defensive player. They've also been second in the conference the last two years in the rushing department. Tostin trying to break this one outside. He's knocked down near the 40-yard line. Just watch the tight end on this play on the outside, Kevin. Excellent block. Watch number 86. Watch him sustain. He's working with this tackle. Now sustain the block, and that just gives you the edge over there. That was a yeoman number 86, the tight end. Excellent job of sustaining. It's not a big block. Keep your feet moving. Your back will find a hole. Yeah, Wilson Yeoman, who spends time behind Brandon Pettigrew, and Pettigrew, one of the best tight ends in the country without question. Go right up the middle here. Marker comes down. Toasted looking to take it to the house, and he steps out of bounds at the five-yard line, but there's a penalty marker. A hold is going to bring this one back. It was thrown way back at the 40. On the offense, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Again, just simple zone blocking again. I think on the outside, you're going to have number nine, the wide receiver, Jeremy Broadway, on the hold, has hands outside the framework. That's where the flag's coming in. Again, just lining up with two tight ends. It's nothing complicated. We call that, when you get a double team between tackle and tight end, we call that a tray block. And again, when you watch from a fundamental standpoint, pad level all at the same, working with your tackle, not stepping too far. It's like getting a good push on the down lineman, then up to the second level. When you get that communication and guys working together like that, I'll tell you what, it's easy for a running back. These two teams have already combined for 12 penalties, and we're just very early here in the second quarter. They go once again. This time it's Johnson and Bo Johnson with a race down the sideline, and this time he's out of bounds. You see where they mark him about the 10-yard line. And that's just the speed. He outruns Jeremy Dawson, number 40. Three, the inside linebacker. Take a look at this play. Dawson's got him beeline, and again, there's just this explosion. Number two, Bo Johnson, able to take that second level speed and outrun the defense. And again, reading the blocks, then when you have to make your cut, give it the burst. Bo Johnson for the big play. A 44 yard gain to the seven, and now to the goal line. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. And Bo Johnson. Missouri State right now not seeing what they want to hit again. Jeremy Dawson, number 43. Watch him come through on the back side. He beats the guard in the center, runs right by Bo Johnson. He has a beeline on him. That should have been a collision in the backfield. Going for the point after here and a chance to make it 36 to 3. And the point after is perfect from Dan Bailey. Bailey. Looks like the Cowboys are going to get a couple of guys over the century mark, at least on the ground today. They lead big and still won. Oklahoma State Cowboys, 36 to six here at halftime here on Fox College Sports. Well, we knew that the Bears would have an uphill battle in this one, and they haven't helped themselves out. You take a look at the numbers, and as you might imagine, over 300 yards of total offense for Oklahoma State in that first half. 
and they have been in control from the very beginning. 318 yards of total offense and holding Missouri State to just 105 yards. I think the thing, if Mike Gundy looks at any of these numbers that he's not going to be happy with, obviously eight penalties for 90 yards in the first half. Yeah, and the one drive they had the high snap and then the fumble after that, so he's not going to like that. But overall, you saw guys up front, a lot of people showing depth, especially at the running back position. Plugging people in and getting positive yards. That's one thing you got to say, hey, looks good. Johnny Thomas is back deep, getting ready to run this one back. He's back there with Bo Johnson, and it comes to the five-yard line, out to the 30, and that is where he will go down after a 25-yard return. And Bo Johnson has his team there, and now let's see who comes out at quarterback. Alex Kate finished the first half at quarterback after... Zach Robinson with pretty much a methodical effort throughout this entire day. He was as good as he needed to be today. Yeah, he was. And again, just his ability to just extend the play with his feet, get outside the pocket, doing a great job in terms of reading the defense, making the plays. Superior athleticism, when you have that at quarterback, makes it difficult to stop the offense. <laughs> you saw that number just a moment ago. Oklahoma State doing all this damage, and their best receiver, Des Bryant, hasn't caught the football today. But it is Alex Kate, and Alex Kate keeps the football. On the third year, sophomore takes it ahead for a nice gain of 14 yards on the first carry of here in the second half. On the quarterback read, getting outside, and again, to pick up positive yards for the first down. Talking to Coach Gundy, he even thought that quarterback young man Kate had a, actually a better arm, better accuracy than Zach Robinson. Well, we saw him throw that out pattern in the first half in that final series, and he's got a gun. Yeah. Wasn't any question, the ball got there in a hurry. Give your quarterback some time out in the field to play. Game speed, so valuable for later on in the season. Handed off to Bo Johnson, and Johnson bounces outside. And he's submarine and taken down out near midfield at the 47. Cedric Alvis came in there and hit him low, knocked him off his pants. Second down. Bo Johnson on the stiff arm. Watch him take this on the outside again, following the outside zone, and in the stiff arm, able to get him to the corner, get a couple extra yards on the run. Now they go three wide receivers for Oklahoma State to the top of the screen. Bo Johnson, that single setback back there in the backfield. Alex Kane here goes to Bo Johnson. Johnson, I mean, near the first down, he's knocked down right at the marker. First time today we've seen anybody take a snap from under center. But we've seen plenty of that. Bo Johnson taking it ahead to the 32-yard line. Well, the leading running team in the conference is going to put up big numbers again this afternoon. Yeah, just zone blocking. Bo Johnson is breaking down with a little stutter step, but I like the one cut and get going north and south. Positive yards. Johnson now over the century mark. He's got 101 yards rushing. Right, Toaston, number five, Keith Toaston. Yeah, Toast, Toaston will get his turn here in late third and fourth quarter. You've already got Kendall Hunter, who is over 100 yards rushing. Now, last week, for just the fourth time in NCAA history, Mike Gundy's team did something that only three other teams had ever done. I'll tell you that after this play here on second down and 10. It's called the Triple Crown, and I'll let you finish it after the play. That's Kate calling the signals. Alex Kate handing it off to Toasted. Toasted to the 20, to the 15, and knocked down there. Another big gain on a second down and 10. They pick up 20. What's Toasting and just the movement again, quarterback feet, defense ends up the field, follow number 75 on the play, big tackle, going in traffic, and Toasting just showing some elusiveness and some poor tackle. Yeah, they hand it off again to Toasting. He's inside the five-yard line, down to the four. Last week, for just the fourth time in NCAA history against the University of Houston, you had a 300-yard passer, of course, in Zach Robinson, a 200-yard receiver in Des Bryant, and a 200-yard rusher in Kendall Hunter. So it had only been done three other times in the history of NCAA football. And last week was one of those times. And Toaston is up around 71 yards. They're going to have three 100-yard rushers today. Yeah, as I said, I, I call that the triple crown. When you get a 100-yard, 200-yard receiver, 200-yard running back, and over 300 yards at quarterback. So that's quite a day. It just shows you this offense, how prolific it is. You see the numbers for Zach Robinson today. 
This will probably be his worst game of the year. Two of four. <laughs> you see, on you know, a rainy day here, and quarterback rating is just going to plummet. That ball getting near the goal line. You know, you talk about Zach Robinson. He's the seventh-rated active career passer with a 148 passer rating. And this guy came in, started last year, and as I said, already just started rewriting the record books. You see his six out of the uh, seven out of the top 18 offensive performances in the history of Oklahoma State. And going back, even counting with Mike Gundy and what he did with Thurman Thomas in those days. Alex Kate trying to get into the end zone. I don't think he's there yet. He's not. So it'll be a third down and the ball just inside the one yard line. Haven't had a signal yet. And there it is. A delayed call, but one we're waiting for for the fans heel here. I'm not really sure who made the call. I think it was Mike Gundy who made the call from the sidelines. <laughs> he looked over. Get Alex Kate. He's got it. The one thing you got to remember when you run that quarterback sneak is he gets in late. You got to take a step away. Let your blockers get that search. Take your step back so you can. What are you doing? What are you doing? I told you he made the call. He's calling the offensive plays. He's making the plays on the ball, on the field for the refs too. It's 43 to 6. Spent some time scuba diving. Watching some Islands. basketball. Those early season tournaments always, always pick good places. Now Kirby is back in the game. Cody Kirby is. I'll throw this one. And that one right on the number. Got to catch that football, and he did not. Brandon Oliver, beg your pardon. It's Justin Fusilier. Brandon Oliver said, hey, that's number six, not number five. I tell you what, Justin <laughs> Fusilier, it, it can't hit you any harder than that. I mean, the ball's got an implant on his chest. Take a look at it. Just running the slant. Ball's nice and low in front. Stays in stride, but I'm going to tell you what, number six, Ricky Price might have had something to do well, with it. You know, that. he played cornerback last year. I'm talking about Fusilier. And you know what they say, the difference between a wide receiver and a Defensive back, oh, we all know that. So go right back to the line of scrimmage and not a whole lot there. Third down and nine. Gunning this one and it's incomplete. Mejia was the attended receiver, but there are a lot of orange jerseys around Ricky Price, the closest man in there on the coverage. It'll be punt time again. Now, right now, Missouri State, after that, 0 for 10 on third downs. Yeah, get some time in the pocket, but it's actually Sexton, number 20, who got back there, got his hand in the throwing lane that time for Horner, the quarterback, not able to get the ball down the field to his receiver. And how great of a key is that to have an Andre Sexton, a guy playing linebacker that's that good of an athlete that can back up like that. Bo Bowling back deep. Bowling had a 66-yard touchdown reception earlier in the game. He's back to run this punt back, and it's a low liner. If he can feel this when he should have room to run but won't have to as the ball takes an immediately left-hand turn and goes out of bounds in good field position for Oklahoma. Alex Kate again, a high step. And Kate will go down after... Losing seven or eight yards. Able to field that ball. A lot of times, once that high snap takes place, it's like a greased peg. Alex Kate able to get back on that football. Again, that's the second one today we've seen of the high snap. You know, we talked about Des Bryant, who does not have a catch here today. The National Offensive Player of the Week. Last week against the University of Houston, nine catches, 236 yards. Now, he has had, you talk about big play. This guy's had, had six plays this year of 29 yards or more. You just saw him on the punt return today, too. We talked about his elusiveness, how big and strong he is, but yet he can make that first man miss. Such a valuable component of both special teams and offense. Averages 20 yards every time he touches the football. Now they lost eight. They get 10 back right there. Out near midfield. Again, it's Tostin. And, and you know why they gave him the number one on his jersey? Probably also. because he wanted it. <laughs> no, it's because from head coach to special teams, the defensive coordinator, he's number one on their list of finding out how do you stop this guy right well, now? Such a valuable component to this team. I mean, every time he touches the ball, he can go to the house. Well, I saw him play in high school. You think he's a, a man against boys at this level. You should have seen him there. And he played at the highest level in the state of Texas. Let's try to set up the screen. They do. Here's Toasted. With blockers in front, stepping through. 
down to the 22-yard line. Can't do it. 29 yard pat pitch and catch and it couldn't have been set up any better yeah alex cade on the pump fake going right and that's what kind of froze the linebackers and again great job by keith toaston letting his linebackers get outside and then how about the block by jeremy broadway number nine down the field coach gundy wants his wide receivers make sure everybody gets in on the block <laughs> Ball set at the 22-yard line. They go to Toasted again. No break for him. You know, when you're third on that depth chart, you know, we see, don't see guys third on the depth chart tapping their helmet very often. They want to stay in there and get their plays when they can. Need as many yards as possible. And again, this is such a valuable time because eventually you're not going to have this time on the field. But again, it's game speed. You're following your blockers. Big number 72 that time, Andrew Mitchell on the pole. And again, you're seeing a good job in terms of letting the blocks develop, patience, then exploding through the hole. And with that carry, Keith Toaston goes over 1,000 yards rushing for his career. Chalk it up. This offense just keeps ringing up numbers. And I thought with Larry Fedora, former offensive coordinator, leaving, Coach Gundy calling the plays might be some hiccups. Don't see any on the field today. Now they go to Bo Johnson on the left side. And Johnson cut it back, steps out of bounds at the five, not before getting another first down. Yeah. Well, it seems like all day long, Oklahoma State's been looking at second down and one. Yeah, just look at it up back. You know, here's your offense lineman. Look at Nick Martinez, number 75. Watch the block he gets at the point of attack. Head to the outside. Now, just keep moving your feet, and that's all these running backs need, Bo Johnson. He just needs that little crack, and he's gone for big yardage. <laughs> There's movement on the interior line, so it's going to back it up. Prior to the snap, false start, 88 of the offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. So. There's more movement inside. Prior to the snap, false start, 72 of the offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. That's a 10th penalty for 100 yards. And today, you see those numbers. Toasted to the five. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. What a run by Keith Toasted. Absolutely some dismal tackling by the Bears. Just take a look at Toasted here. Working the front side, reads the zone block, now makes the back side. And look at how many missed tackles. Two, three, four missed tackles. People diving on the ground, Toasted in the end zone. Again, following the blocks. And look at the leg drive. I like the balance, change of direction. And you can do that. You keep your pads over your knees, over your feet. And an even half a hundred on the board. Now the fans have braved the weather and they've been rewarded. Their team is on top, big. against the guy that's a little bit bigger a little bit faster than you're what you're used to going against and all of a sudden you know what that snap count is on you're going a little bit earlier throws everything off now they've reversed the field here King Jack Washington and I will tell you one thing about King Jack Washington whatever he does on the football field he'll make your all name team any day of the year S Missouri State team comes in here 0 and 1 they will leave 0 and 2. They're getting it handed to him right now. 50 to 6. There's King Jack Washington again. He's cut down at the line of scrimmage. And he'll be the first one to tell you we should have never put ourselves in that type of situation to begin with. Man, just looking at their plays, third looks like it's going to be fourth and short, and maybe they've got the first down. Let's see where they mark it on the field. But get Washington now over 60 yards and breaks this one outside if he can get to the corner gets to the 45 yard line has a nice gain of 14 yards and grade number seven comes over and lays the wood what did he ever say what he put him in a fog take a look at this king jack just bounces outside a good charge up front by oklahoma state the cowboys know where they go king jack just finding his own way i'm gonna tell you what he takes a shot he goes from about two yards inside to two yards outside on that push Gray's hit the weight room a little bit. 
a strong upper body. Now on the keeper, quarterback Cody Kirby. And Kirby lost the ball. He's nailed. They're going to wave it dead. They'll say the ball is down at the 45-yard line in Oklahoma State territory. And the fans in the orange ponchos not liking that. Can I add to your statement? He lost the football. Maybe his teeth also, yeah. too. Take a look at Cody Kirby on the quarterback keeper. Watch the hit by number 12, Johnny Tom. Oh, he was, yeah, he got hit, hit hard. Excuse me, that was uh, Markel Martin that time on the hit. Now the fans, fans want to review this, and, you know, the Missouri State's just trying to get the ball snapped. They do. And King Jack Washington goes right back up the middle in another nice game. That was on second down and a couple. He got nailed. And, you know, you're seeing a lot of those hits today where guys try to make cuts, and the, they kind of slip a little bit on the cut, and they get just pancaked. But that's excellent job on a run support by that secondary for Oklahoma State today. But you like the level of contact. You like the tackling performance. You like the fundamentals. You're going to need that when you play in the Big 12 against these prolific offenses. And this is Warren, and Warren takes it over the left side. It's a second down coming up. Second team linebackers in as well right now, as you might imagine. Going up top, and that's knocked away. Again, the coverage, Markel Martin, and a penalty marker comes in. And the thing that Martin did was never look back to the quarterback. Jared Emery was the intended receiver. Yeah, how about Warren up top there? He makes a good block That's there at number 97 price. 10, 10, 15 yard hey, you think Cody Kirby's got a strong arm? They say he can throw 55 yards on one knee. And this time he just underthrows his receivers. Receivers got a step on Martin that time. He has to come back for the ball. Jared Emery that time. But he had Martin beat the cornerback. He's got to put the ball out in front of your receiver, let him run underneath it. That is the 11th penalty of the game committed by Oklahoma State for 115 yards. I think Oklahoma State's got more penalty yards right now than Missouri State does rushing yards. Warren trying the left side, everybody staying at home. Gray leading the way. Knocked away. Good coverage again by Maurice Gray. So now third down and 11 coming up. Yeah, watch Fusilier on this on the slant. He's got to keep coming to the football. Nice throwing lane here for Cody. He delivers the ball. You've got to keep coming to the ball. He stops. You can't let the defensive back climb over your back. So keep coming back to the ball. It's there. He stops on that route. While the defensive back has a chance to make a play. Missouri State has completed just two passes today. They got a third down and 12 coming up here. Throwing this one, it is complete. Warren and Warren down to the 15 yard line. He's gonna be short of a first down. It's gonna bring up a fourth down and seven. Going for the first down on fourth down and seven. They've not converted on a third down today. They're two and two and four. Going into the end zone and this one caught touchdown. The tight end, Clay Harbor, there to make the reception. And for the first time today, Missouri State gets into the end zone. Yeah, watch the pressure on Cody Kirby. He stands in the pocket. He knows he's going to get hit, but still delivers a strike. And that time, Clay Harbor, the tight end, watch him extend his arms. Now he's coming to the ball. All day long, he's been letting the ball hit him in the body. This time, catches it with his hands, even to come in for the big touchdown. Yeah, as I talked about in the past, one of the coaches I had when I was in the NFL, Frank Gans, and special teams. And I'll tell you what, it's so important because it changes the momentum of the game, changes the dimension of the game. You want to talk about taking a team out, a couple big special teams play, and you know what, you're right back on top of the game. Now you see the new quarterback coming in. It's Brandon Whedon. He hands it off to... Toasten and Toasten down the sideline to the 20-yard line. And he slammed down at the 18. Wow. Toasten just showing some leg drive, able to carry defensive players all the way for an extra 10 yards. Just going off the right side. Look at the zone block, trade block between right tackle and tight end, second level to the linebacker, and Toasten doing a good job of patience. Now explosion. Now watch him just carry people down the field. Hey, what? Doesn't matter, that's a Mack truck running the football. A 55-yard gain. 
you know, Whedon saying, hey, this is not so bad. Now he'll throw it, his first collegiate pass, and it's dropped. But Whedon, a former baseball player, he's listed as a red shirt freshman, 6'4", 215 pounds. He's from right down the road in Edmond, Oklahoma. Hands it off to Bo Johnson, and Johnson is into the end zone. What a run. He wanted it at the end. It's all about passion. It's all about a desire to get into the end zone. When you're in the red zone, it becomes the Super Bowl. You raise your level of play to the next level. Take a look at it again. Sustained blocks up front, reading it. And then how about the block downfield again? Jeremy Broadway has had at least two or three flatbacks. Watch number nine. What's the block he gets? And that's the reason why that young man, number two, Bo Johnson, is able to dive in for seven. A chance to make it 57 to 13 late here in the third quarter. And a point after is good. Fifty-seven, thirteen. The final score is Oklahoma State comes in, taking care of business against a team that they needed to take care of business against, and they did just that. It was really a, a very strong performance from beginning to end. It all started on the ground, and boy, it finished on the ground as they were really good. Yeah, dominate performance up front again. Talking offensive line, tight end, wide receiver, everybody getting in on it. But how about number twenty-four, Kendall Hunter? He's the first one. Look at the touchdown run, and again, excellent job at the line of scrimmage, doing a good job. It didn't matter who was up front; they were getting it done, sustaining blocks. And when you can do that, your running backs are going to have those field goals. Well, Hunter, Johnston, and Toaston sounds like a law firm, but today they laid down the laws. They were the ones leading the ground game, that's for sure. Hunter with 132 yards rushing, Johnson with 138, and Toaston with 148. There's Bo Johnson taking it in for another one of his strong runs. And you like what you see down in the red zone in terms of guys getting it into the end zone when they have to score pad level effort. And you know, when you can exert a running game like that, we talk about the psyche of the game, controlling the tempo. Well, it starts with the running game and it finishes it. And that's what Oklahoma State did today. They do. They rush for 450 yards on the day. On the defensive side, now this is one of those games where, you know, you're challenged from the standpoint to keep the, keep the concentration, keep things headed in the right direction. And I thought Oklahoma State, for the most part, they did that defensively. Yeah, they did up front. And I thought tackling was excellent today. I saw guys at the point of attack defensive line. That was a big question mark for them coming in. Do they have the depth this year to sustain? You know, that was one of the things that happened last year. They didn't. Guys got fatigued. Today, you saw rotation eight guys up front and that's going to be the difference for them they have to continue to improve if you want to have a chance this year in the Big 12 so once again Oklahoma State taking care of business against Missouri State they go to 6-0 all time against the Bears Oklahoma State rushing for 450 yards on the day the defense dominant and once again, our final score, 57 to 13 for Richard Baldinger and all of us at Fox College Sports. I'm Kevin Eschenfelder. Again, our next telecast coming your way next week from Lawrence as Sam Houston takes on Kansas. So long from Stillwater. It's a weekly rewind of the Big 12's biggest plays. Inside the 10, touchdown. FSN Southwest makes sure every highlight in the Big 12 gets queued back up and played on the Big 12 Instant Replay.